This is Carissa Enright. This is the continuation of a series of videos that will cover the medication categories most commonly used in psychiatry. The first antipsychotic came to market in the mid-1950s. These medications revolutionized psychiatric care and gave the first hope for patients to live outside of an institution. The soundbite for the typical antipsychotics is think stiff. This refers to the extrapyramidal side effect of dystonia. These medications block dopamine throughout the brain and is responsible for the major side effects of the neuroleptic. This is the dopamine pathway for a psychosis. But dopamine is also responsible for muscle movements. This purple pathway goes to the motor cortex. This red pathway affects thinking and mood in the middle brain and frontal cortex. And the green pathway in the hypothalamus affects the hormones like prolactin. Here, all the pathways are blocked. The purple pathway to the motor cortex is where all the extrapyramidal side effects come from. The blue pathway blocks the hallucinations and is the therapeutic action of these medications. The red pathway to the frontal cortex makes it more difficult to think and feel. This side effect will abate over time, but it tends to blunt their emotion and make negative symptoms worse. The green pathway causes hormonal changes such as gynecomastia. For now, let me talk about this timeline of extrapyramidal side effects. An acute dystonic reaction is not common. Less than 10% of the patients on an antipsychotic will experience this EPS. It will occur early in the treatment, sometimes with the very first dose. The muscle dystonia happens rapidly, and patients find it very alarming. Characterized by a forceful, involuntary pulling of the neck muscles so that the chin goes up to one side, called torticollis, the eyes will roll back in the head or shift back and forth in an astigmas. And if particularly severe, it will prevent swallowing and the patient is at risk for choking or aspirating. For this reason, it is regarded as life-threatening and all nurses must be able to identify this syndrome. The reaction does not resolve until the dopamine blockade abates a matter of hours. Therefore, quick action is required. The treatment for the acute dystonic reaction is an anticholinergic medication. Haloperidol is particularly likely to cause this reaction, and most prescribers will give an anticholinergic with the neuroleptic as a matter of course. Acacesia may take a few days to manifest. This side effect is the one most likely to cause patients to stop taking their medications. It is very uncomfortable. The patients cannot sit still. They feel a jittery restlessness. Unless nurses assess this as a side effect of their medication, it's common for nurses to give more antipsychotic to treat what looks like agitation or anxiety. Most of the side effects will abate over weeks or months of treatment. However, acesthesia does not. Often they need to take a benzodiazepine to get relief. Pseudoparkinsonism develops at higher doses or later in treatment. The signs mimic Parkinson's because that is a disease where there's not enough dopamine for fluid muscle movement. You're not likely to see much of these signs in clinical because the medical management is to use the newer atypical antipsychotics or to start low on these medications and titrate up. The most debilitating and dreaded EPS is tardive dyskinesia. This is a movement disorder that needs to be seen for you to recognize. I encourage you to find YouTube videos posted to teach health professionals how to diagnose this. Tardive is a word derived from the word tardy or late. Dyskinesia is literally translated into abnormal movements. After years of dopamine blockade in the motor cortex, the brain compensates by becoming more sensitive to dopamine. 
Tardive dyskinesia is just the opposite of the stiff, immovable muscles seen in Parkinson's. These movements are involuntary and continuous. With concentration, the person can force the muscles to stop moving, but as soon as their attention turns to something else, the movements return. The only time the muscles still is during sleep. The first signs will start in the mouth. Each person is different in how many muscle groups are affected. The treatment is to take them off the dopamine blockade and hope the movements go away. For some patients, the movements never go away and the condition is permanent. Research into reversing TD is ongoing and there are newer treatments that have some promise. Recognizing all these extraparameter side effects is a major nursing responsibility and is often on the NCLEX. Most importantly, you need to know and recognize the two most deadly, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is very rare and treated in the ICU, and the acute dystonic reaction that threatens breathing. These are the notes provided in your course on these medications. All this information has the potential of being tested on your next exam. And this slide gives you some information on the anticholinergic medications. 